The Pearl of the Soul of the World by Meredith Van Pierce. Chapter 15, Rhyme's End. Ariel, Ariel. Awake, a still, inward voice whispered. The pale girl shifted, dozing. Her husband lay sleeping beside her, his breaths even and deep. The strange pattering of rain drummed lightly now. Their makeshift tent rustled gently with the soft, constant wind. Ariel pressed closer to Irolath, too drowsy to listen to any sounds but these. After the flood, Irolath had made them, had made this small pavilion out of her wedding sari. Gathering poles from the surrounding flotsam, he had set them upright in the soft ground, then draped and wound the yards of the yards and yards of yellow stuff about their frame. The magical air-thin cloth kept out the damp. Their clothing dried quickly, and the ground over which their shelter stood soon inexplicably became dry. The quiet murmur again came. Ariel, awake. Still half dozing, she forgot it the moment she opened her eyes. Pillowing her head on one arm, she gazed at Irolath. For the first time since she had known him, his face was at rest, no longer troubled by the witch's dreams. Smiling now, she remembered the heat of his body these passed out, these few hours past. What she had hungered for all these day months ever since their marriage night. No longer my husband, only in name, she murmured, kissing him, as she reached to pull a few stray strands of hair back from his lion's cord face. Yurlath shifted, sighing deeply asleep. He never roused. Only a little while ago he had clasped her to him, with such urgency and passion, as though some intervention loomed to part them. As though only a little time remained, Ariel laughed, amazed at her own unaccustomed happiness. Here beneath their wedding silk, she gazed at her husband with the greatest attention, a lover's gaze. Every inch of him was beautiful to her, Ariel. The soft utterance came again more insistently. Ariel sat up with a start. She cast about her, baffled. But she and Irolath were alone. The voice, eerily familiar, seemed to come from the air. Where are you? she whispered. Here, the answer came. Within, I am within you now. Ariel felt a tremor, something stirring in her blood. The scent came to her suddenly of ancient flowers, dusky and sweet. Astonishment washed over her. She knew the voice. Ravenna, she breathed, shaken. When the pearl had shattered in Oriancor's hand, Ariel had thought the ancient lady... Surely then, if not before, utterly destroyed. The still inward voice seemed to chuckle. Hardly the whole of what Ravenna compromised, it, mur it murmured. But a little of her, yes. Call me Ravenna if you will. I am part of what she was. Ariel struggled to catch her breath, to take it in. Overwhelming remorse seized her suddenly. Why do you sorrow? Ravenna within her asked. The war is won. Ariel's breast heaved. It was with dry... Saw, but it was with dry sobs only. She felt the white marks in the shape of stars left upon her eyelids by the witch's touch. Because I have failed you, she whispered, and all the world. What matter that the war is won if all the world is lost? Lost, the voice said. Lost, the voice of the pearl stuff in her blood exclaimed. My daughter's end is at an end, child. Her drought broken. Her creatures drowned, and all my rhyme has come to pass. Except the last, Ariel exclaimed. Their shelter sighed in the gentle breeze. She gazed about her with the walls of silk, at their scattered garments at Irolath. Despair tasted like wormwood in her mouth. The last line of the prophecy is not fulfilled. Your gift is scattered to the winds. No daughter remains to hold the world and claim the crown. All is lost. Not lost, the ancient's voice within her whispered. It need not be lost. Ariel shook her head. How many more generations had this vast war won for the planet? A handful, a score, so pitifully few it scarcely mattered. Without Ravenna's daughter to guide the healing of the world, Ariel thought bitterly everything she and Irolath had struggled for was, was vainglory. In the face of all the devouring entropy, it would all wind down to nothing in the end. 
That need not be, the inner voice murmured, and Ariel realized belatedly that the pearl stuff in her blood could read her thoughts without or whether or not she spoke them aloud. The entropy need not prevail. Another might gather my scattered sorcery and heal the world in Oriancor's stead. Ariel blinked. Her own white radiance lit the enclosed space softly. I don't know what you mean, she breathed. Be my successor, child, Ravenna's voice whispered. A little of my power is in you now, enough to guide you in gathering the rest. But, she protested, dazed, I'm not your daughter, the rhyme says. Are you not? The other asked gently. Did I not tell you in New Ravenna that you and many others of your young race are descendants of my ancient one, many generations removed? The world is yours now, your birthright, your inheritance. We ancients are no more. Become my daughter, even as Irolath was once the witch's son. Accept the crown of the world's heir, Ariel. I've no one left but you, Ariel sat silent, unable to take it in, to fathom it. I can't. She, she stammered. I don't know how. You underestimate yourself. Enough of me remains to show you how to start. It will be a long and mighty task, but not beyond you with my aid. Vistas unfolded before her, misty with possibilities still. Ravenna's sorcery reclaimed and the world made whole again. Ariel blinked in surprise, beholding until she realized that the view came from her came to her through the remains of the through the remnants of the pearl. But we must haste, the still quiet voice urged her. Better to go at once, while still he sleeps, the pale girl frowned at Irolath. Go! The pearl stuff in her blood swirled restlessly. Yes. Have you not understood what I have been telling you? This task will consume you. You must leave all else behind. Ariel drew back, a chill breathing through her. Leave Irolath! The voice within her subsided at last that said, At times we must give up what we hold most dear for the greater good. I gave up my daughter, all my sorcery, my very life. But Irolath is my husband! Ariel exclaimed. We've only just found one another! The whole world needs you, Ariel, the pearl's voice answered sadly, and he is only one man. New images unfolded before her mind's eye, the planet dying. No, Ariel whispered, no. Anguish racked her. She wished she might turn away, ignore the knowledge, refuse the gift. But the ancient sorcery was already inside her. There was nowhere she might turn. Irolath needs me, she tried desperately. I am truly sorry, the pearl's voice murmured, but, but I have allowed you even these brief hours at great cost. Time passes, you must ask not, you must not ask more. Ariel gazed down at her prince. Gently, she cupped his chin in her hand, and still, deeply sleeping, he turned his face as though to seek her touch. An unutterable weight descended upon her. Her breast felt heavy and sore. She tasted the witch's heart upon her tongue. Ariel cradled her husband's cheek, unwilling to let him go. He saved me, she whispered, remembering her terror in the flood. I can't swim. I'd have drowned when the palace fell if he had not. Drowned? The voice in her blood exclaimed, Nonsense, child, you can't drown. This new body I gave you is not so easily destroyed. A thin thread of cold wound through Ariel. She shivered hard. What do you mean? She asked, baffled. What new body? I don't understand. The pin, child, the pearl's voice insisted. Did you not guess? The white witch fastened it so you so it could not be removed without killing you. Ariel's eyes widened. Her free hand flew to the place behind her ear where the pin had been. She felt no soreness there, no scar. But you plucked it out, she gasped. You pulled it free. Yes, and most of you perished in the flesh. I had to rebuild the greater part, though I saved all that I could. Your heart, your eyes, your mind. Your soul, of, your mind and soul, of course. With a strangled cry, Ariel snatched her hand from the sleeping prince's cheek, recoiling in horror, not of him, but of herself. In numb dismay, she stared at the body into which she had awakened, feeling so strangely new in the city of crystal glass day months ago. What thing have you made of me? She gasped. Her eyes returned to Irolath. He had been a demon once in Averick and she had made him mortal again. She herself had been mortal to, had been mortal then. But what was she now? 
A monster? She choked. No more a monster than the star horse, Ravenna with an replied, or any other of my wands. No more than Melchior. A golem, the pale girl managed, shuddering. Yes. A clockwork automaton, like the Duro's underground machines. No, never. A biological construct. You are still flesh child, not gears and wire. Staring at herself, Ariel laughed, weakly dismayed. A fine match, she repeated softly, thinking of the star horse. This new engine for my soul. She moved her fingers, clenching and opening her hand, but the motion had become accustomed now, no longer felt odd. Something slid along her arm. A tiny chain, scant as spider silk, so fine she had not noticed it before. She recognized the filament Ravenna had used to fasten the pearl to her brow. It had become entwined upon her wrist somehow. When she had handed the pearl to Oriancor, distracted, Ariel shook her head, still staring at her strange new flesh. As like my old form as like, the words trailed away. It is the soul that makes us human, not the flesh. Believe me, child, if I had had another choice... Why did you not tell me? Ariel grated furiously. She sat gasping, scarcely able to speak. Outrage and a crushing sense of betrayal strangled her voice. I did not think that wise, the song in her blood answered deftly, dispassionately. I had to conceal my design from your, from your adversary at all costs. If the witch had read even a glimpse of it in your eyes or so much as suspected what it was you carried, she'd have destroyed you long before you could give her the pearl. Ariel shook her head. Oriancor's words came back to her. Little fool. No more than her clockwork golem. Unimportant. Slowly realize, realization dawned to Ravenna within her. She said at last, You meant to sacrifice me our, and our entire army to the end if need be. A weary silence. She was my daughter, Ariel. I had to try. No sound in the tent. Then, but night winds gentle gusting, and ear last soft even breaths. The voice of the pearl said no more for a time. I've been your cat's paw all along, Ariel said quietly, amazed. We have all been your gaming beads. Then suddenly, sharply, did you have... Did you know the pearl would destroy her when I put it into her hand? The pearl stuff within her roused sluggishly, as if reluctantly seemed to sigh. I greatly feared it, if she would not accept the gift. And now you would make me the world's heir in place of Orion Corps? She worried the fine weightless chain about her wrist, but it would neither break nor slip free. Ravenna's daughter, she said bitterly. Some called me that even before this war. And a green-eyed enchantress, she felt the pearl stuff moving in her blood and shivered. Perhaps those titles have a grain of truth behind of grain of truth to them now after all. Behold, Ariel felt a change within her, her vision sharpened, becoming infinitely more keen. Everything around her revolved into little burning filaments that twined and juggled, made it and danced. Her own hand, Irolath, the edge adamantine, everything was made of them, strung together from beads of fire. And we will pause there.